how are you? Hi, Donna. I'm great. How are you? Good, good, good. I'm so happy to have you on the show today. I'm first going to, you have done so many things and you're on so many boards and advisory boards and I want to talk about it all because it's so interesting. Um, you have a BS in marketing from Pro Providence College and your passion is for authentic uh, portrayal for people with disabilities in media and society. And you work for Inclusion In. Can you tell us a little bit about that and what your role is? Yeah, so the organization is called Disability In. It's a corp. We assist corporate with their disability inclusion efforts in business. So really getting companies to be more inclusive of people with disabilities. My role specifically is the director of the Disability Quality Index, which is a benchmarking tool that companies use to self-assess their disability inclusion journey. And the goal is to reduce the unemployment rate of people with disabilities and allow people more opportunities to work. One of the great things that came out of the unfortunate pandemic were, was the ability to have flexible work options, encouraging companies to allow people to work from home if that's what works best for them. But of course, now that the pandemic has settled down a bit, there are some people that still may want to go into the office physically, but does not mean we can go backwards in physical accessibility. And just making sure that employers are putting it out there that someone can ask for an accommodation from the job application process to onboarding, to interviewing, to retention and advancement. Let's see more people with disabilities in high roles. Then you work with companies to see how they're doing with their inclusion and you try to get them and you try to get more companies involved to do that, right? Yes, absolutely. Okay. And it's called Disability In. Yes. So, okay, now I'm correct. <laughs> now you have a background also, you are a casting director for CAA at Creative Artists Agency, I was a talent agent assistant, and then I worked in the casting department at CBS oh. Television Studios. Yeah, oh, that's great. And uh, you must have loved that too. That was exciting, right? It was a great experience, but it was slow moving when it came to disability inclusion. And I was eager for things to happen faster. And that's why I decided to move over to helping the corporate world, because in that space, direct competitors are coming together and sharing best practices and willing to make a change if they're given the right information, where the entertainment industry is still very image focused, box office numbers, assuming that people with disabilities can't bring money in, even though authentic portrayals are important because it affects how people like us are treated in society. Exactly. <laughs> I um, I feel that because I'm an actress and a dancer. Um, I also do speaking, motivational speaking, as you do everywhere. Um, and it is important in the entertainment industry to um, have more inclusive um, roles for people. And, uh, you know, we are doctors, we are lawyers, we are secretaries, we are everything. Absolutely. And it needs to be out there. And I'm four or five myself. So, um, and it's hard. Now you are on the chair, or you are a chair on the Little People of America. Right? And the, employ the employment chair. So really helping focus on more job opportunities for people in the dwarfism community, bringing awareness to people who are ready, willing, and able to work. They just need a chance. Oh, that's, that's fantastic. And you've done things like um, you've hosted fashion, fashion yeah. shows at the, um, at the Little People of America conferences. And we, tell us about how, how, tell us about doing that. Like you were the MC, right? Yes. Uh, the fashion shows have been an amazing experience. Back in the day, there have been over 60 years of celebration with the organization of little people of america and over the years there has been a conference that happens during fourth of july week every summer and on the agenda for the conference is a fashion show one of the nights there's also a talent show and other great events but the fashion shows are really a way for people to find an outfit that makes them feel confident and walk the runway and instead of just talking about what people are wearing 
we mm -hmm. also have built a narrative around how people are feeling. Like what is confident? What does beauty mean to them? And that's what we read rather than just focusing on the outfit and someone's figure. It's just the, them being a part of the fashion community. And who they are as yeah. a person. Exactly. It's very, very, very important. And what other boards or advisory boards are you part of? The National yes. Center on Disability and Journalism at Arizona State University. One of the reasons I chose to accept that board position is they put together a great style guide. It's called mm -hmm. the NCDJ Style Guide, where it is meant to be for journalists, but it helps anyone in any profession when it comes to interacting with the disability community, the preferred terminology different groups within the disability community use, and terms to avoid. So I do invite people to take a look at the National Center on Disability and Journalism Style Guide, and it's available in multiple languages because it really helps change the narrative around disability and the fear that comes with doing the work around disability inclusion because people are afraid of offending. Yeah, and and there's a lot of things where people are afraid that, you know, we can't do certain things because of our height. And um, we just have to find different ways to do things. Am I right? That's absolutely totally correct. We just need a yeah. step stool or a reacher and we find a way to do it. We're determined. Exactly. Now you've spoken in um, schools and colleges and corporations and um, nonprofits. Tell us, um, that's amazing because that brings awareness everywhere. And that's important. Um, I love to speak to kids, so I, I spoke to kids as a dancer. And um, what's your favorite group? What do you connect with the most? The kids. I was I was just at a school last week. I think it's a lot of fun talking to the kids and changing their mindset, and they're able to go home and educate their parents on how to be more inclusive. We assume that the narrative has to be the other way, but. There's so much more inclusivity and diversity happening in schools today. And if kids can go home and teach their old school parents a thing or two, that can be helpful. I've kind of found a niche in going to, into schools where there's a person with a disability transitioning from elementary to middle school or middle to high school. And I go and share my story to the student body, allow them to ask me the tough questions with hopes of a smoother transition for that new student who may not be ready to answer the questions that people want to ask. That's, that's so important. It's so important to start with the kids because they are going to grow up and they are going to share their opinions and their feelings. And it's important that they learn how to talk about it and, you know, their feelings about it. Definitely. And I, I really, I'm so happy that you're going out there too. It's, it's wonderful. But right now we're going to take a little break. And then I want to talk about your international, your international experience in Kenya. So, and this is exciting because when I read it, I was like, Oh my gosh. So we'll be right back, okay?